So let's talk about ratios. Here in this problem it says, in a classroom there are 10 males and 15 females. And it's asking us, what is the ratio of males to females? And a ratio is just a way of expressing uh, the number of males compared to the number of females. Um, so let's start off by writing down uh, the total number of males that we have. And we know from what's given to us in this problem that there are 10 males in the classroom. So we have 10 males. And the number of females is also given to us in this problem. It tells us that there are 15 females in this classroom. So we know that there are 15 females. And we need to find the ratio of males to females. And notice the order of this ratio. Uh, males come first and females come second. And that is really important. So let's start off by writing down the total number of males. And we know that there are 10 males in the classroom. And the ratio is always expressed with a colon in the middle. And the second part of the ratio is females. So we're going to write the number of females second. And we know that there are 15 females in the classroom. So this is our ratio, 10 to 15. What this means is that for every 10 males, there are 15 females. But notice how this ratio is not written in the simplest form. Both of these numbers can be divided by 5 evenly. So let's do that. Um, if we divide 10 by 5, uh, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. And if we divide 15 by 5, 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. So we know for every two males, there are three females. And that's exactly the same as saying for every 10 males, there are 15 females. But this is just in reduced or simpler form. And there are also other ways of expressing the ratio. You can also express the ratio as a fraction. You could say for every two males, there are three females. Or you could also write the ratio using words. You could say two to three. These are all acceptable ways of saying for every two males, there are three females. So now let's talk about the ratio of females to males. Remember how I said the order matters. Let's talk about the ratio of females to males. Notice how this time females is the first part of our ratio and males is the second part of the ratio. And this is exactly the opposite. We know that there are three females for every two males. So the ratio of females to males is three to two. At this time we had to write females first and males second. So that is my brief introduction. Now let's go over two word problems that involve using ratios. So here in this problem it says a classroom has a total of 30 students. There are 20 males and what is the ratio of males to females? So let's start off this problem by writing the total number of males and the total number of females. And it's given to us in this problem and we know that there are 20 males in the classroom. So we know that we have 20 males. And the number of females in the classroom is not directly given to us, so I'm just going to leave it blank for the moment. But the total number of students is given to us. It says the classroom has a total of 30 students. Um, so we know that there is a total of 30 students. So now we can use this information to find the number of females. Uh, we know that the number of females has to equal 10 uh, because if we add the number of males together with the number of females, 20 plus 10 must equal our total of 30. So at this point, most of you can probably finish this on your own. Uh, the question is asking us, what is the ratio of males to females? And the males is the first part of our ratio. So I'm going to write the number of males first, uh, which we know that we have 20 males in the classroom. And we have to put a colon in the middle of the ratio. And the number of females is the second part of the ratio. Um, so we know that there are 10 females in the classroom. So the second part of our ratio is going to be 10. So here's our ratio of males to females, 20 to 10. But this is not in simplest form. Notice how both of these numbers can be divided by 10 evenly. So that's what I'm going to do right now. If you divide 20 
by 10, 20 divided by 10 um, is equal to 2. And if you divide 10 by 10, 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1. So our final answer is 2 to 1. For every 2 males, there is 1 female. So let's go over one more example. So here in this problem it says, in a class, the ratio of males to females is 4 to 5. If there are 36 total students, how many females are in the class? So once again, let's start off by writing the total number of males in the classroom and the total number of females in the classroom. And none of this information is directly given to us. But the only thing it tells us is the ratio of males to females is 4 to 5. So let's just say that we have 4 males and 5 females. And this is because we know the ratio of males to females is 4 to 5. So we know that if we have 4 males and 5 females, then our total number of students in the class must be equal to 9. 4 males plus 5 females is equal to 9. So we know that this is not a real situation because we know the total number of students in the classroom is equal to 36. That's given to us in the problem. We have 36 total students. And here in this situation, the total is only 9. Um, so this can't be the real situation. This is not real. However, uh, the ratio is correct. Uh, the, the ratio of 4 males to 5 females is correct. So now let's make another box of the real number of students in the classroom. And we know that there is a total of 36 students. So we have a total of 36 students, and this is the real situation. So let's take a look at what just happened. Our total number before was 9, and we had to multiply that by 4 to get our real number of 36. So that means we need to multiply everything by 4 to keep the ratio the same. We need to multiply the number of females by 4, and we need to multiply the number of males by 4. So if we multiply the number of 5 females times 4, 5 times 4 is equal to 20. So we have a real number of 20 females. And if we do the same thing with our males, uh, we had 4 males, and if we multiply that by 4, we're going to get a real number of 16. 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So going back to our original question, how many females do we have in the classroom? We have 20 females. And this answer makes sense because if you add the total number of males, 16, plus the total number of females, 20, we get our total number of 36 students. Um, and this also makes sense because our ratios stay the same. We had a ratio of 4 to 5, 4 males for every 5 females. And in our, in our real situation, we had 16 males for every 20 females, which is exactly the same as 4 to 5. So I hope this gave you a better idea of, on ratios and word problems. I will be making many more videos in the future, so stay tuned. I really hope that you are enjoying these, and I will see you in my next one.